In this video, we will demonstrate the solution of a problem of an epicyclic train. We will demonstrate the method by solving this mechanism. In this problem, we are given the rotation of the arm to be 1. and the rotation of gear 2 to be 3. We will proceed first with the formula method. To solve for the rotation of gear 2, we will have to assume that uh, this is the first gear, this is the second gear, and we have the answer here immediately using the formula. And uh, for the rotation of gear 4, to continue with our problem, this is the first gear, second gear, and we have our solution for gear 4. We will now proceed with the tabulation method, which is also called the superposition method. We will have to draw this table appropriate for our problem. We have the columns for the arm and the component gears of the epicyclic train. And uh, these are the three basic steps we have to go through. One, two, and three. As a first step, we rotate the whole mechanism with the arm once. So we have to put these values. We can do it with the actual mechanism. We rotate the whole mechanism in the clockwise direction once. Yeah, we are rotating it now and we will stop. Once we stop, the component gears along with the arm have rotated once. In the next step, in the next step, we will have to fix the arm and rotate the gears. With the fixed arm, we can put zero in this uh, box. And uh, the value two in the next box for gear two. Actually, we are somehow jumping ahead. Let us remember that our resultant must be one rotation for the arm. And this number of rotation is the sum of the rotation of the contents of the first two boxes above. And this is also true for the next column for gear 2, where the addition of the number of rotation contained in the two boxes above will give us 3. Actually, we simply put 2 so that we will have 3 as our resultant, because that is our one of our given. Now, let us see our actual mechanism for the second step. The arm is fixed, and we rotate the two gears, uh, gear 2 twice. And as we rotate gear 2 twice, gears 3 and 4 also rotate. Now, we can return to our table. And we can proceed to put these numbers of uh, this the number of rotation in the next two boxes and then after this we can add we will have our resultant rotation for gear 3 and our resultant rotation for gear 4 we now have our solutions for the epicyclic train problem. We now have additional explanations on the method of solution by the tabulation method. The first step is about locking of gears with the arm. We have to rotate them all together as one unit. So we have them all rotating 
with the same number of rotation and what we put the same number of rotation on each box that is true for gear 3 and gear 4 now for the second step the arm will be held stationary so it will be zero for the rotation of the arm that will be true for all the solutions and so for the other columns we will have to put uh, some values appropriate as we have to determine depending on our given values and uh, after putting these values we have to add the columns the addition will really give us the resultant which satisfies our requirement the same is true for the column for gear 2 and uh, gear 3 and gear 4 and uh, we will have the values as the answers or the solutions to our problem of the epicyclic train we will have uh, similar demonstrations of this later in the next problems